When I first started coding, it was a really big deal to me that my terminal actually looked decent. I kept seeing all these cool terminals everywhere and I couldn't figure out how to get this thing started, what in the world it was, how to use it. So I'd like to do a couple of videos here over the next couple of weeks detailing kind of how to get started with terminals. Now to start with today, we're gonna to do the real easy one, which is just theming it. So how do you actually get it themed so it looks how you might want it to look? Today, I'm gonna to show you five things. First, how to install a framework called OhMyZSH over the shell ZSH. Secondly, how to install a theme to customize the prompt for ZSH. Third, how to add plugins for OhMyZSH. Fourth, how to install Powerline fonts so you get these cool symbols that give you more information. And then fifth and finally, show you how to get started with a better terminal than the default one that comes on your system. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, let's do that first step, installing OhMyZSH. Now, by default, Mac OS ships with ZSH, which is a shell that runs on your computer. And I've got terminal open over here. If you're not sure what shell you're running, if you type echo dollar sign zero, it will tell you. And in my case, it says ZSH. This is the default prompt for uh, ZSH as well. If you're running bash, which was installed on older versions of Mac OS, it would have this dollar sign. Now, Windows does not use either of these by default, so you need to install ZSH, and I'll try to remember to add some links below in the description if you want to check those out first and then come back here to learn how to theme this. All right, so with that set up, we know we're running ZSH. We want to install this framework, which is kind of like React on top of JavaScript uh, for ZSH. It allows us to do things like theme our prompt, decide what it looks like, um, and it gives us plugins and a bunch of other cool stuff. So let's come in here and click on Install. It will give us access to this script right here. And you can see that this was written for bash in mind, but you don't have to copy that, just everything right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add that and hit enter. And if you did it correctly, you should see a couple of things. Number one, you get this very colorful intro. Uh, next, it's telling you that you now have a .gshrc file where you can uh, customize your experience. And then also the prompt itself has changed. Now it looks just like this, rather than having that percent sign. Now, all this is done at the root of your directory, which by default is that little tilde sign. So you can open that ZSHRC file. If you have VS Code installed and the CLI tool installed for that, you can just type code like that, dot ZSHRC. If you don't, you can just type open and it will open in text edit. That will work just fine as well. All right, here it is. And you're gonna see that it tells me basically where the home folder is. It's at dot oh my ZSH. So that's the folder that it installed. Next, if I come down here, you're gonna see that I've got a theme by default. And that's actually the second thing I wanna show you, how you can add a theme to customize your prompt. Now, by default, it has this Robbie Russell theme. Let me come back over here. Let's look at the very top. You're gonna to see that we've got a link to themes. So that will open up a new directory here or a new tab that will point us to a bunch of different options. So here's the default, the Robbie Russell. And as you scroll down, there's a bunch of other ones. The one I use typically is called Agnoster. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And you'll notice that all these ones here in the official repository are actually installed by default when you install OhMyZSH, which means all I have to do to add this is to come in here and paste that in and save it, and then we should be good to go. Now, you're not gonna see it right away. The easiest way to see it is to open a new tab. So if you hit Command-T, that will open a new tab. Now, because this is light theme, this is kind of hard to see, but if I highlight it there, you see now it actually gives me some special symbols that aren't working because I've yet to install fonts. I'll show you that in a couple of steps, but just to say that the, the theme itself has clearly taken effect because it's changed my prompt. Now, if you wanna do a different one, you can look through here and there's a bunch of ones you can look at. You don't have to use one of these though. You can instead download any one you can find online and install it yourself. Now, in order to do that, you have to actually get access to your .omyzsh folder. Easiest way to do that is to come in here and just type open like that with a tilde forward slash dot o dash my dash z s h. And that should open it in your finder. All right, it opened it up over here. And you'll see I've also got a tab pulled up with a custom theme by West Boss. It's called Cobalt 2. And it's a popular one that a lot of people like. You can come down here and he's going to basically step you through it. Basically, you drop this thing into your dot oh my zsh dash themes directory. So here it is right here, dash themes. And these are all the default ones. That's why you can just add their name and they work automatically. So let me come up top here and grab this. If you click raw and then command S, it will allow you to save that. If you're not automatically in this folder, you can just hit command shift G and it will actually open up different possibilities. Just make sure that you've navigated to whatever your user folder name is, which the easiest way to do that is the same way we did it in the finder. So just like that, and it will open it up to this area. 
then you'll click inside your themes and you just want to drop it directly in there. If it adds on like a .txt file, make sure to get rid of that because you want it to end with .zsh-theme. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now it should be available there. If I go back, uh, he tells you that all you have to do now is rename that ZSH theme equals Cobalt2. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's head back all the way over this way, and I'm going to add it in here. So let's save that. I'm going to come back over here, open up a new tab, and now you can see that it is not found. <laughs> all right, so that's not what we want to see. And in spite of all my hard work, it still added a .txt file extension. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just re-download this, put it back in, and be right back with you. All right, so I went ahead and just re-downloaded that, and now everything is working correctly. And let's go ahead and actually CD into something so you can see what this looks like. So if I come into my Documents folder, and then I look at my websites, and inside Personal, I have a Coding in Public. Now you can see here this Cobalt is actually theming this, and I've got all these special characters in here too. Once again, that has to do with special fonts. But before I show you that, the third thing I wanted to show you is different plugins that you can use. But you can see how this theme is being applied. Let's actually move back to the Agnostor one. And now I'm gonna come back here, open this up, and there you go. So it's slightly different, it's hard to tell because this actually includes my full file path. Whereas this last one, if I move back here, it doesn't, it just has this little cross instead. So there's some differences between the West Boss one and the Agnostor one, but one of them is the fact that it has my full file path here. All right, anyhow, uh, it's gonna be hard to see here. I'm also gonna show you how to use this on a better terminal in a second, but all we're trying to do is kind of do these steps one after the other. All right, so there are a bunch of different uh, plugins that you can use that basically give you extra powers uh, in your terminal. So you can see here there's stuff for Git or for Node, for Spotify, for VS Code, for all this kind of stuff. So you can just click through here if one of these looks interesting to you, or you can click See All Plugins and look at a bunch of different plugins that come with it. So you can also install custom plugins as well, but these are the ones that are supported out of the box. So let me go ahead and I'll just show you a couple that I use, this npm one. You can see how npm now comes with this alias that will run uh, npm global. So it'll install any global dependencies on your machine just by typing this little alias. So if there's things that you do all the time, there's a good chance that there's a plugin for it in oh my ZSH. So this npm is one. The other one I've used before is this VS code. And again, this just gives you different um, aliases that basically run commands. And there's other ways to set up this kind of stuff. But again, if you're already in the terminal, it's nice and easy to just be able to type quickly. And it's not like you have to use every one of these for the plugin itself to be valuable for you. If you obviously add like dozens of plugins, it's going to slow your terminal down some. But for the most part, if you're just adding a couple that you find use for, you will be able to get some superpowers without doing too much. Now, let me show you how to do that. If I come back over here to my code, right down here, you see I've already got one plugin installed, and that's Git. And that was installed when I first uh, went ahead and loaded this in. I think it's just because it sees Git on my machine. Maybe it comes to default. I'm not really sure. But all you'll do is come in here and add them like this. So VS Code and NPM, those are the names of two other ones. And you can see here, I actually have GitHub Copilot uh, suggesting another one as well. So I'll go ahead and save that. And now I have access to these as well. So that's how you add plugins. All right, fourth, I want to show you how you can install these fonts so we can finally see what this looks like. The kind of font we'll need is something called Powerline. So let me come in here. I'm just going to search for Powerline fonts, and here you go. I'll include a link to this GitHub in the description. There are a bunch of other ones on top of all this, and I'll actually show you the one I use as well. But the important thing is that they basically have access to these Powerline symbols that you'll need. So Inconsolata is one that a lot of people use, for instance. Afira uh, uh, Mono is another one that a lot of people use. So you can look through these and see whichever ones appeal to you. I use one called Cascadia Pro. And if you come in here, Cascadia Code, there we go. Um, Cascadia Code right here. And there are a bunch of different options here. Uh, this is the one I actually use in VS Code as well, and I've done a video on that before. So you've got Code, you've got uh, Mono, and then you've got uh, Powerline PL right there. So this is the one you'll want to use. And let's see, you can download it right here. And if you just download it here and install all of those, those will come with that Powerline font. Then what you need to do is actually add it to whatever uh, code editor that you're writing in. So for instance, if I were to come in here and hit command uh, comma to get to the settings, you'll see that I get a bunch of options. One of them is to change the fonts. So I'm going to come up here and look for my, my Cascadia. That's a little hard to see here. And here we go right here. 
And you can see that font automatically updates for me over here. And you can see now I'm getting the symbols coming in that tells me that I'm on a Git branch. Obviously, this uh, doesn't work with the current light theme background I have, so I could change the themes here. But I'm not going to worry too much about that since I'm actually going to be using a different terminal. I don't use the default one anyhow, so I'm not going to waste your time setting it up. But you can see that that's how all you have to do is install that and then suddenly get access to all those symbols. Now, when it comes to VS Code, which is where I do a lot of my work, same thing. Command comma, or you can go to your settings uh, just right here. And what I'm going to want to do is actually look at the terminal.integrated.font family and change this to Cascadia code PL or whatever font that you want. Uh, you can also come in here and just search for a terminal like that, and it will give you access to a bunch of things. Let's see. Let's look at terminal font. There we go. All right, so Cascadia co code PL. So it's the same thing. I just edited it in the, the JSON file instead. Now, if I come in here and I open this up, now you see I'm actually getting this coloring in right here. And just like there are themes in standalone terminals, there's also themes in VS Code. I've shown mine before, but mine is just called uh, Monokai Pro. And I can come in here and select different themes, and these uh, reflect the themes down here as well. So they work for both the terminal and everything up top. So the one I use is called Octagon, and that's the one I like. So there are a bunch of different options for you, but uh, whatever one you like, uh, usually they work with the terminal and all of this. So if you use the integrated terminal, as long as you've got that Powerline font installed and everything set up with oh my ZSH, you're going to get all that cool theming by default. All right, that brings me to the fifth and final thing I wanted to show you today, which is to install a better terminal than whatever your default is. And the one I recommend is something called Hyper. And uh, if you have one that you like, let me know in the description. But the reason I like Hyper is that it is basically cross-platform, so it will work for anything. And so that way, if you're a Windows user, you can also get access to that. Um, same thing with Linux. And so all you have to do is download it for whatever machine you have, or you can view other platforms again and download down here, and then go ahead and open it up. All right, so if I've opened up mine here, and you can see that I've gone ahead and gone into a directory just so you can see all those symbols showing up. Here's that dark color that works just fine here because uh, the theme I have works great with it. Now you can open up your settings for Hyper with the same keyboard shortcut, so Command, uh, Comma, or like if you're on Windows, I think there's probably like a, let's see, Preferences right here. Or from the terminal, you can come in here and say Code to open it in VS Code, or Open to open it in your text editor of choice on your machine. But here again, this is at my root directory. I'd say hyper.js, and that's a .hyper file. And now that will open up everything over here. And I'll just walk you through what I've got, and I'll put links to this in the description. You can see here I've added my Cascadia code powerline because I want that font here as well. And then as you come down here, you've also got other things that you can add. So like I've got this wicked border color. This all comes from Wes Boss's uh, theme. If I come down here, you see I've got this hyper term Cobalt 2 theme. So that's the theme I use in here, and he's got some customizations you can add. In fact, if I come over here to themes, you can search for any theme you want. Let me come into newest here, and I'll search for Cobalt. See, that might not show up. Let's do Hyper Cobalt theme. All right, so here it is right here, Hyper Term Cobalt theme, and you can install this. And it walks you, uh, Wes walks you through this. So open your hyper.js file. That's what I just showed you how to do. And then you basically just are going to add this plugin right here. And then I also have these two things on, the Wicked Border True and the Wicked Border Color. And this is just part, um, uh, an additional thing that you can add if you want. Now, in addition to just giving you better styling for the Hyper theme, this also includes a ton of plugins itself. So you can look at a bunch of plugins that they have included in the actual Hyper theme that's disconnected from your ZSH. Oh, my ZSH, there's just additional things you can do. So for instance, you can add special panes in Hyper that you can navigate to with arrows. You can change the opacity of your window. You can decide when to quit it if you want to quit it as the last window is closed. Now, in addition to just giving you good themes and plugins that you can use, there's also a bunch of additional features that you can add. For instance, uh, like there's this Hyperline plugin that gives you a readout along the bottom of the screen that gives you like your battery, per battery percentage and all this kind of stuff directly in your terminal. There's tons of stuff like this that you can customize for your terminal. But since I'm just showing you the basics of kind of theming, getting up colors working properly, how you want them to work, making sure you get those power line fonts installed, and understanding how my OZSH can improve the overall experience, I figured I'll probably stop here. 
If there's a terminal you really like, like for instance, iTerm2 is a really popular one, or you have a special theme you like, or there's a plugin that works really well for either OMIZSH oh or Hyper or some other terminal, let me know in the comments below, but I hope at least for those of you who kind of wanted to know how to get started, that this was a good and useful guide. Now, I hope to do a basic tutorial next week on just how to use the terminal. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. But in the meantime, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.